Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing the 8 pen challenge and I'm quite excited for this. I've really been enjoying watching everybody else's over the past, I think it's been six weeks. It started at the beginning of March. It's now mid-April and so we're going to get into this. Question number one, when and how did your fountain pen journey begin? My fountain pen journey began in a very, very odd way. I had been working on a project since January 2023 and one morning in April 2023 I woke up and discovered that while I'd been sleeping overnight I'd been fired and I sort of spiraled for a couple hours and then went okay I now have all this free time what am I going to do and I decided that I was going to apply to Ferris Wheel Press Jubilee they had just put out a call that they were looking to fill some spots and even though it wasn't a paid position, I really just needed something to keep my brain busy. With the brain injury, one of the worst things I found is getting bored, because um, getting bored just leaves my brain time to get frustrated, so I like to stay busy. Or I like to do things that make me feel like I'm busy, even if I'm not super busy. And so I applied to Ferris Wheel Press Jubilee, and I ended up getting a spot. So shortly after that, I realized that maybe, maybe I actually needed to purchase a fountain pen and I ended up purchasing a Parker 45, which has been inked ever since, is one of my favorite pens, is the pen that I use daily in my planner, and it's just a great pen. So my fountain pen journey started because I got fired from a job. <laughs> favorite inks in the beginning versus now. So Ferris Wheel Press started out as my favorite inks and they're still some of my favorite inks and I just greatly enjoy them. They're fun, they're great to play with. I use them in pens, I use them for painting, but Ferris Wheel Press Madame Mulberry has been an ink that has been in that Parker every day since, I wanna say middle of April last year. So uh, actually it's April now for about a year. <laughs> It has been in that pen. I've cleaned the pen a couple times, but Hemingway Jones actually has a great video on it for, about are we cleaning fountain pens too much? And because I'm constantly just inking that Parker with the same ink, I don't actually clean it all that often unless it's writing weird, in which case then I'll clean it properly. Otherwise, it just gets re-inked. And because it's always getting re-inked with the same ink, I've never had any issues. I actually own two bottles of this ink. I bought a second one from a local pen shop who was getting rid of their tester bottle. So my tester is a slightly different color than this one, I think because it was sitting on a shelf and got exposed to a whole bunch of sunlight. Other than that though, it's a great color and I love having it in a pen. Question number three. How have your ink and pen taste changed over time? I would say they haven't really. I'm still very much in love with vintage Parkers. I have three. I have two 21s and a 45. I got the 45 for reaching a thousand subscribers on YouTube and the black 21 at Scriptus. I love them. The 45 hasn't been inked yet because I'm still working on cleaning it. It was bought in an estate sale and it needed some work. The Black 21, on the other hand, has been inked several times. It's actually currently inked. It's been sitting in my pen cleaning bin, actually. It's the next pen that needs to be cleaned out. But I've also added pens that I said I wasn't going to add, which were Quaco Sports. I had always heard that Quakos had awful nibs, that you had to test them out, that they had awful consistency. But when I was at Scriptas last year, I decided that I really wanted the Mellow Blue Quaco Sport. And I ended up testing three medium nibs, and I found one that wrote spectacularly. And so I purchased it, and then I decided that maybe I did like Quaco Sports. They are a great size for throwing in my bag. And so I got two Quaco Sports customized by Kira Kent. I have an entire video on these. They're absolutely stunning, and I will link that video below as well as her Instagram. She does painted nibs, but she also just painted pen bodies. And for my painted nibs, I ended up just telling her, I want you to do nibs for me, please, but I don't know what I want. Please stalk my Instagram. 
<laughs> and she did, and she came up with the ideas, and they're absolutely stunning, and they're so me. And then this is a Bordeaux in Broad, which also writes spectacularly. This has had an update since the last time it's been seen on my channel. I have switched out the clip for a bronze. Yeah. I'm never going to get the full bronze pen. It's going to be too heavy. But because this is the pen I purchased the day Grandpa died, I really like having the clip that's going to patina on it. And I'm really happy I made the decision to actually put the bronze clip on it. Ink-wise, I still stick to the pretty muted colors. We're actually going to swatch all these out because I think it's more fun that way than just talking about them. So Ferris Will Press Madame Mulberry goes on this gray but dries pink. Of course, I can't spell when I'm filming. Gotta love a brain injury. Storied Blue is the next one that always goes in the same pen. It always goes in my Quaco Sport. It never goes in another pen. It just goes in my Quaco. And it has for months, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. It is just the perfect muted blue. Most of these colors are from Ferris Wheel Press, but surprisingly, all of the ones that I daily drive are colors I've purchased myself. Actually, two of them aren't. All but two are ones I purchased myself. Um, the two that aren't are more recent releases. So we have Pink Eraser, which is an old release. I bought my bottle secondhand, which is why it's, say, probably a third gone. But it was a good deal in a color I wasn't sure that I loved. But I have to say, it is such a fun color. Then we have Storied Blue, which was a whole debacle to get if you've seen the video or seen the opening from Atlas, the first one. They ended up having to send me a new bottle because the first bottle I got was green for whatever reason, not this lovely dark blue. But apparently that's just an issue that there was a batch. that for whatever reason, dried green. Finally, the final Ferris Wheel Press Matte is a color that most people will not have seen yet because it has been out as of this moment. I think it's been out of media blackout for like six hours. It is Bayou Berry Mist. It is a stunning purple and it totally fits my muted color palette. I was so excited when I got this color this month. It's so much fun and it really fits in with my more muted palette that I use for daily writing. It's sort of like the purple version of Madame Mulberry, I'd say. Run out of space on this sheet. Then in my Cueco, the burgundy one, 
we have this stunning color, which is plated gold tresses. Which I've actually ordered another bottle of. From Atlas. To pick up at Chicago. I love it. We have two more inks. We have Mont Blanc Cool Grey, and we have Sailor Kiwagio, which of course we don't have space to swatch out both, so we're gonna swatch out the Mont Blanc, and maybe I'll swatch out the Sailor down here. So I love this Mont Blanc. It's got a great opening up top. And because I can, I'm gonna write this out with the Waterman. Hasn't been ridden with in a couple days. Blunt cool gray. The lovely waterman. A little bit of skipping, but it hasn't been inked in like four days so I think I have this in a sample still so let's see oh, I do and we have sailor black which is my favorite permanent black super opaque super waterproof just an all-around great black it's what I use for all my black line work and watercolor pieces. It is my go-to. And I have it in a pen. And so it is... There we go. And this has not been written with for probably four days and still writes beautifully. Number four, are there inks and pens you'd like to try but have yet to? Ink wise, I'd like to see the Wear and Girl inks and the Sailor Studio inks in person because I've seen that some of the Sailor Studio inks have really cool like variation to them when they dry on paper, but lots of the online swatches like just show them a single color. And so I'd like to actually try them in person on the paper I use and see if I like them or not. And then Warangal, they just have cool collections and I don't know if I just like them because of the hype around them or if I'd actually like them. So I'd really like to see them in person. Same with pens. I like the idea of a Visconti Homo Sapien. Practically, I don't think I'd like it. So I'd like to see it in person and see how I feel about it. Number five, what's your holy grail pen? I'd say if I didn't already own one, a Schaefer snorkel set, but I have my grandfather's and so I don't need another one. Reasonable grail that I'd actually like to get is a Quaco piston filler. I just think they're really cool. I like my Quaco sports. That being said, I think it's another thing that I'd want to see in person and hold because it might just be too heavy for me. Unreasonable Grail is a Yardo Led the Victorian. I think I just love it because of the craftsmanship of them. I just want to see one. I want to hold one. I think that would be enough to settle my fascination in them. That's sort of one of the nice things about the brain injury. Is that oftentimes just seeing and holding something is enough to get over it. But I would actually like to see it in person. How many pens do you currently own? I would say probably about 20. 
about a third of them are these Ferris wheel press, the carousel pens, which they come out with about one color every two months. So I've got a pretty good collection of these. These are the pens that I tend to put inks that are shimmery or inks that I'm not really sure that I like into. So if I'm trialing a color, but I'm not super sure that I actually like it, this is the pen it'll go into just because they're easy to clean, I find. And it doesn't feel like as much of a commitment in a pen like this. So most of these pens have glitter stuck in their feeds and are just used for shimmery inks. And I sort of like it that way because then I'm not committing a pen that's really expensive to shimmery inks. Number seven, do you have a limit on pens or inks? In your collection, is it a number? Is it a feeling? When do you know when you've reached your maximum? I would say that I'm much more selective on pens and inks than I am with, let's say, watercolors. My watercolor palette's massive. Inks, I probably look at like 60 or 70 ink swatches actually in store for any ink bottle that I add to my collection. Online, I probably look at hundreds of swatches for any ink bottle that I end up purchasing. I started to look for a gray for the Waterman in, I want to say September, and I didn't find one I liked until the beginning of March. I had tried at least one other gray before I settled on this one, but I looked at hundreds of gray swatches, and that's sort of just how it goes. Also, I get sent about two inks a month every month at tier two at, with Ferris Will Press Jubilee. So this month I got Billowing Blush, Bayou Berry Mist, and a carousel pen. So really any ink that I add to my collection, I have to love and really love knowing that I'm going to get sent inks that maybe I don't use as often. I've got a lot of greens in my collection. I don't tend to use green ink very much unless I'm using it for an art piece. So ink wise, I'm super selective because I want any ink that I add to be something I'll use. So I do tend to stick to these like more, yes, pink eraser and plated gold tresses aren't in that muted category, but like everything else is in that like paler, more muted, less sort of really bright category, because that's what I actually use. And so I want the ink that I invest in to be inks that I'll actually use. Same with pens. I don't want a pen that I won't use. Yes, the Waterman lives in a rickshaw sleeve. The Waterman lives in a rickshaw sleeve on my desk though. I use the Waterman. I've used it since it was inked, probably every time I've worked at my desk. And that's important to me. It's not going to be a pen I'm going to throw in my bag, but it is a pen I'm going to use. I don't like having tools in my studio that aren't getting used. And I feel like that's something important to me where anything that exists in my studio is something that's actually getting used. Number eight, consequently, what would you do if another ink or pen came along? I would save up affiliate credit. I had been saving my Atlas affiliate credit for Quaco Piston Filler. I decided that since I was going to the Chicago Pen Show anyways, I'd rather use my Atlas credit for stuff that I'd been looking at that's quite expensive to get in Canada that was significantly cheaper at Atlas. And so that's what I ended up doing. I ended up using affiliate credit to pick up and pre-order some stuff there. Other than that, though, like, I don't... I don't add that many pens to my collection. I don't add that many inks to my collection. Anything I add has to be something that's actually A, useful, and B, something I'm actually going to use. I use my Quakos. I use my Parkers. For a long time, that red Parker was just a pen that was thrown in my purse. <laughs> like, it just got tossed in my purse every day. It doesn't anymore. Two of the Quakos just get tossed in my purse, and that's what I sort of love about my Quakos, is that they just get tossed in my purse. I remember seeing a video about how to prevent scratches on pens and going, they're a tool 
why are we making sure they don't get scratched? What I l absolutely love about this Waterman is that it's missing a cap. It's missing a clip, sorry. It was his daily pen. He was a, high, a principal. It was his daily pen and it shows its age and it shows its wear. And it's a pen from the 40s. It shouldn't be pristine. It should be used. It should be loved. And I like having tools like that. I like having things that show, show that they were used and that they were loved. And that's how I like my studio to be. And so I save up affiliate credit, but I'm also not going to purchase something that I know I'm not going to use. I have the Schaefer. I've never used the Schaefer, but it was also grandpa's pen. And I did get it restored. And at some point I am going to ink it. But I honestly think I need a lesson from somebody in how to properly ink a Schaefer snorkel before I ink it because I am absolutely terrified of screwing it up. Yeah. I s yeah. My answer is I save up credit, but honestly, I only purchase things that I'm actually going to use because I don't feel the need in having tools that I feel too precious about to use. Doesn't make sense to me. So. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope this was informative. Um, and if you've participated in this challenge, let me know. I've greatly enjoyed watching other people's. They've been a lot of fun to watch. And let me know what your go-to favorite ink color is. Specifically in the purples or in the muted colors. Those are what I, like, muted colors are what I tend to reach for. But I'm also looking for a good lilac currently. A good non-shimmery lilac. So, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed.